Hey, I'm about to put this guy in cuffs. So, hey, hey, say, say one more thing to this dog. Canine officer had his dog attack a man because the man allegedly trash talked the dog. Say one more thing to this dog. Stop resisting! Stop resisting! Stop resisting! Yes, Lieutenant Vanover. Lieutenant Vanover, has anybody been able to do an interview with the uh, canine yet? With the actual dog? To find out how offended the dog was about being called a bitch? Do oh, you... that's funny. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, do you think that, I mean, between you and I, I mean, maybe I could throw you 20 bucks or something you could get me an interview with the dog hey everybody it's james freeman and today's video is coming to us out of canton ohio where a canton canine officer had his dog attack a man because the man allegedly trash talked the dog <laughs> What kind of dog you got? This guy in cuss. So, hey, hey, say, say one more thing to this dog. Tear it up. You're about to go in cuss. Go inside, you're going to tear it up. Go inside. Hey, he's under a rock. We caught, caught the dog. We're done. I'm going to watch it back with you guys again. There was actually a whole lot of stuff going on during this. And so I'm going to watch it back and commentate on it just to point some things out that I didn't realize the first time that I watched it because I've watched it through about 10 times over. This all started out with a traffic stop. There were a couple of teenagers pulled over by the Canton Police Department for allegedly not using their turn signal. All of this, <laughs> all of this is stemming from somebody allegedly not signaling their turn so during the traffic stop at some point residents started coming out of their houses protesting a little bit what the police were doing watching them recording them <laughs> This woman right here uh, is telling the cop, oh, I got a dog at home. Your dog can come home and play with my dog. Uh, the cop seems kind of friendly about it at first. Oh, yeah, what kind of dog do you got? She says, I got a German Shepherd. <laughs> and he seems kind of friendly about it at first. And then she says, uh, she says, yeah, my dog will tear your dog's ass up. <laughs> and you can hear in his voice. He, he goes from being a little happy. Hey, let's talk about each other's dogs. 
And she says, my dog, my dog could beat up your dog, basically. <laughs> and, he's, and he's super upset already. I'm pretty sure he just said, your dog is a bitch. Yeah, your dog is a bitch. And then he turns to the other officers and says, hey, this guy's about to be under arrest. Hey, I'm about to put this guy in cuffs. So, hey, hey, say, say one more thing to this dog. Tear it up. Say, say one more thing to this dog. I don't know if the dog's offended. We'll, we're going to try and get an interview with the dog to see on a scale of 1 to 10 how offended this dog was at being called a bitch. The dog's owner, the officer, seems to be at a 10, maybe an 11. You're about to go and cuff. Go inside or go to jail. Go inside. So these other officers come over. They tell him, go inside or you're going to jail. Hey, he's under arrest. So he tells him, hey, he's under arrest. And with no question whatsoever, the other cops go, okay, great. We're arresting him. Um, they don't think for themselves, is there probable cause for an arrest? It's just, well, this guy said to do it. Let's do it. Done. So the, the good cops are right here. These two cops right over here. Let me go back a tiny bit so you can see them both in frame. That's a good cop and that's a good cop. Good cops watch bad cops make unlawful arrests and do unlawful things and do nothing about it. That's what a good cop is. And this is why you hear people say that there's no such thing as a good cop. A good cop doesn't just stand by and watch evil happen. He stops it from happening. So there's the bad cops. Here's the good cops. And these good cops will probably never even make it into the report. There'll probably be nothing written about them. Uh, it, it'll be as if they weren't even there, most likely. Done. The report says that he was resisting arrest and then they took him down to the ground. But let's watch it. Focus on them as they go after him. As soon as they put hands on him, he doesn't look like he resists physically in any way whatsoever. Hey, he's under arrest. We caught, caught the dog. So they walk up, they put hands on him. He immediately puts his hands behind his back. Done. And then all of a sudden, his, his hands are behind his back and that like, and then all of a sudden you see this cop go for his legs and, and go and take him down. But the other two cops are still holding him up. So it's as if he's supposed to go down to the ground, but he can't go down to the ground because the other two cops are holding him. This one cop right here tackles this guy, the, the alleged suspect, as well as the other two officers. This cop tackled two cops and this guy. His hands are still behind his back. Now, clearly he wasn't resisting. And so I'm trying to figure out why this cop right here tackled him. And we're going to need to see some other body cams, I think, to figure that out. Because my guess is this dude was probably still talking shit. <laughs> he was probably still running his mouth. And this cop got triggered, got his feelings hurt, and said, well, I'm going to take you down. <laughs> Resisting, you'll get bit. But you can tell he's not resisting and now they want him to get bits so they say keep resisting and you'll get bit you look at his hands are still crossed behind his back he it looks like he's handcuffed because he never moves his hands from that cross position behind his back but he's not handcuffed that's him not resisting that's him being more compliant than just about anybody i've ever seen in my life um so all three cops get off of him and watch, he continues to hold his hands in that position behind his back even while the dog is tearing him apart, which is pretty unnatural. The natural reaction to feeling pain is to try to stop that pain from happening. Whether you squirm and maybe put your, your arms under, you know, he's biting you on the arm. It, it might be a natural reaction to try to tuck your arms under your body, uh, something. But it's completely unnatural. It takes a lot of self-discipline to, to be able to just sit there and not move 
while you're having the sh crap beat out of you or being bitten. But watch, he never moves his hands. The entire time the dog is tearing him up. So after I uploaded this video, I had to come back and re-edit it because YouTube age restricted the video because of me showing this scene unblurred. The reason I felt it was so necessary to show this scene unblurred is so that you could see beyond reasonable doubt for yourself that this man kept his hands crossed behind his back the entire time the dog was chewing him apart. The point was to show you that this guy was not resisting, but that he was using extreme self-discipline and self-control to hold still while being eaten. YouTube decided that me showing you what was actually happening here for educational purposes qualified as glorifying violence. And the cop uses what looks like some type of taser device to get his dog off. They <laughs> Watch over there on this side of the screen. I'm going to go back a few seconds. There's a lot going on, but the crowd's gotten a lot more riled up at this point. Uh, the, uh, the police have not just escalated the situation with this one guy, but they have escalated the entire neighborhood because now the entire uh, everybody out here just watched this happen. So watch that right over here by the red car. Watch this car. Walk up and just push somebody. And then after all that alleged resisting, alleged resisting, it only takes one cop to walk him to the car. The Canton police officer who deployed his canine is Officer Nicholas Castro. He has now been placed on administrative leave. The police report says this all began with a traffic stop and eventually led to multiple arrests. We need a new mayor and we need a total breakdown. Of Every cop needs fire and a new, new training. They need sensitivity training. They need something about how to deal with people. They don't know how to deal with people. The man you saw being arrested, Keevan Conver, has been charged with resisting arrest, disorderly conduct, and obstructing official business. He and his family have hired an attorney. He's Bobby DiCello. There's a problem in Canton. And Russ, I represent three deceased men and now one who's been fed to a dog. And we need the state of Ohio, the governor, we need the DOJ, we need local law enforcement to take action and stop this. I spoke to the leader of the Stark County NAACP today, uh, Reverend Hector McDaniel. He said reform is coming. He's talking to the police department there. He's talking to the mayor. He's optimistic reform is coming to Canton. What are your thoughts on that? I, I join him in that hope. I want that for Northeast Ohio. Let me know in the comments what you think it would take for there to actually be change. Try to think about what the problem actually is because a lot of times I think we address symptoms of problems rather than actual problems. What is the core problem here? Is the problem that cops get offended when you call their dog a bitch? Is the problem that cops are over emotional? Let's talk about it in the comments. What, what is the, the real root of the problem here? Because if we continue to address symptoms, I kind of feel like we're never actually gonna solve problems. I'm gonna make some phone calls real quick and, and I'll bring you guys along with me. First off, we're gonna try and get an interview with the dog to find out just how offended the dog was to have been called a bitch. Yeah, please, Destiny. Hey, Destiny, how you doing this afternoon? Good, how are you? I'm doing good, this is James. I was looking for a, uh, a sergeant or a supervisor that I could speak to real quick. Is there a direct supervisor you're trying to reach, like to a certain department, or? Yeah, whoever might be on duty right now. I don't think I need anyone specifically. I think any of them could do. One second, I'll transfer you, okay? Thank you so much. Hello? Hey, Lieutenant, I'm sorry. Your your voice is real quiet. Yes, it's Lieutenant Vanover. Lieutenant Vanover? Yes. Hey, this is James. How are you doing this afternoon? Good. What can I do for you? Hey, I, I had a couple of questions. I'm, uh, my organization is getting ready to publish a story on the incident that happened uh, last Thursday with the dog. I, I know there's not going to be a whole lot of stuff you can say, but I wanted to try and clarify some of the, uh, some of the facts of the incident as the department um, wants them put out. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I'm not, uh, I'm not going to talk. That's why we have our uh, lieutenant Garrett. 
Okay. Has anybody been able to do uh, an interview with the uh, canine yet? With the actual dog? To find out how offended the dog was about being called a bitch? Do oh, you... that's funny. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, do you think that, I mean, between you and I, I mean, maybe I could throw you 20 bucks or something. You could get me an interview with the dog so we could find out just how the dog felt about being called a bitch. Do you want Lieutenant Garen's phone number, sir? I mean, that would work. That would work. I, I feel like you're a nice, okay. nice guy. And, and I think to you, it probably no. makes sense because allegedly the dog, somebody talked shit to, oh, sorry, talked trash to the dog. And so I just wanted to know how the dog felt about this. And, and I'm sure you can understand that's a rational <laughs> thing to. Sure. Okay. So, uh, let me give you, let me give you Lieutenant Garrett's phone number and you can contact him. This is his direct line. Okay. Let me know when you're ready. Sir. I am ready. Yes, 330-438-4526. 330-438-4526. Correct, sir. Okay, do you know what the name of the canine is? Uh, Scooby. Scooby? Scooby. Oh, that is a great name. Is the canine on leave also, or just his handler? Both. Both are on leave. Okay, so Scooby's in trouble, too. I would say so. Okay. I, I, I wouldn't, uh, I mean, he listens to his handler, so, um... You know, it, again, this is an investigation that's going to be handled uh, by our internal affairs department. So at this point in time, that's where it's at. Okay. Well, I, you know, maybe I should just keep my opinions to myself. But between you and I as, as men, I don't think there's any such thing as a bad dog, just bad owners. So I went to their Facebook page to see if they posted anything about this incident, if they posted the press release there and found that there's nothing but police propaganda. Um Nothing about this incident at all. We've got uh, back dating back to April 16th, um, Dispatcher Appreciation Week. Uh, we've got Cops Grooming Children and National Police Week. Uh, look out for a scammer. We've got uh, Please, with school getting out, remember that ATVs are illegal. Make sure your children aren't having fun. But there's nothing about this uh this incident on their facebook page so i uh i tried to call dennis garen he didn't answer i left a voicemail i'll also shoot him an email and try to get that press release for you guys i'm sending a email to the pio officer saying will you please send me the press release regarding the incident where scooby bit somebody for talking smack to him last thursday also, we noticed while watching the video that Scooby's handler claimed that the man was, quote, taunting Scooby. We noticed that the man did indeed call Scooby a bitch on the body cam video. Our reporters would like a chance to interview Scooby and his handler. We would like to ask Scooby on a scale of 1 to 10 how upset and taunted he felt when this man called him a bitch. And we would also like to ask his handler, uh, which is Officer Nicholas Casto, on a scale of 1 to 10, how taunted he felt when this man called his dog a bitch. Uh, we noticed that the moment when Scooby's handler was initially triggered was when a woman told him that her dog could beat up his dog. Could you please inform Officer Nicholas Casto that my dog could also beat up his dog? My dog is a 165-pound Anatolian Shepherd. Also, my dad could beat up Officer Nicholas Casto's dad. Please let him know that no matter what, there's always going to be somebody bigger than him. And there's always going to be a dog bigger than his dog, and there's always going to be a dad bigger than his dad. Sincerely, James Freeman.